from them. So, so what keeps you up at night? <laughs> a lot. But anyway, first of all, let me just say thank you all for being here, and thank you, Andrew, and Aspen Ideas Festival for this opportunity to talk about what keeps me up at night. Um, you know, I think that uh, I want to go back to something you wrote, actually, Andrew, in New York Times article about the energy challenge. And you referenced a conversation between Firestone and Edison on Edison's deathbed in 1931. Firestone, like tires, you know, Firestone. Yeah. Uh, Henry, I think. So yeah. there's another quote, and this is what does what keep, keep me up at night, and it's by uh, Edison, the father of our electrical grid, and it goes, sunshine is a form of energy, and the winds and the tides are a manifestation of that energy. Do we use them? Oh, no. We burn up wood and coal as renters burn up the front fence for fuel. We live like squatters, not as if we own the property. And I think what keeps me up at night is we need to start living on planet Earth like we own the property. And so when I think about that, and, and when I was undersecretary, we did what's called a strategic technology energy plan, which is to say if we were to hit the government's goals of 17% greenhouse gas reductions by 2020, 42% by 2030, and 83% by 2050 relative to the 2005 levels. What would it take? And so we laid out a plan and walked it backwards. And in the electrical consumption, it's, it's real simple. It's one plan. It doesn't have to be the plan, but it seems to work. And it's basically a third nuclear, a third renewables, and a third fossil, where half would be with carbon capture and sequestration. So it's a third, a third, a third. It's easy to remember. And I think what keeps me up at night is really the nuclear piece. And I think also the carbon capture and sequestration. We can get there with the renewables. 33% is not a huge lift. If we just keep deploying wind and solar, we do need to still have government policy, investment tax credits, or production tax credits. And hydro, we can get there. Right now, we're about 12%. So we have to get another 20%. But if we just keep putting you know, something like 7,000 megawatts a year of wind, 4,000 megawatts of solar, and we do a total of uh, 20,000 megawatts of hydropower by 2035, we can get there and we, we have that capability. Nuclear, I, I'm concerned about. You know, we were just building the first new nuclear power plants in the last 30 years. Um, thank you. And, uh, you know, I think that's a challenge. It's a challenge because I think a lot of people don't understand nuclear power. I'm not an expert, but I do know that the types of plants that were in Fukushima are very fundamentally different than the Gen 3 Plus that we need to, to build now. So I think that's a real concern. And then how are we going to do carbon capture and sequestration at scale? And if we go after distributed gas where we're not going to do carbon capture and sequestration of the gas plants locally. So we have to have larger plants where we can do it at scale. So other than that, I sleep well.